joy to be together to worship God, whether we are here in the sanctuary or joining online. If you're joining online, if you go to our website, fbcpendleton.org, you will find the worship guide and the announcements, which might be helpful as we worship together. If you are here in the sanctuary and you did not get a worship guide, we have some at the back and at the side entrance to aid us as we worship together. You have just witnessed one of Richard's wonderful talents, which is extending the prelude. As I was running around this morning trying to find different things and speak to folks after not seeing some of you for a while. Uh, and our family was away at the lake this week and just got in last night. So it might be a bit scattered today, but it is certainly a gift to be together for worship as we join together as a church family. Let me invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your many, many gifts. We thank you for the gift of family, for the gift of church family, for the gift of friends and community. We thank you for the opportunity together to worship you. And we thank you for your presence in our lives in both difficult times and times of joy. And we pray, God, that as we worship this day, we might sense your presence in a strong and powerful way. May we enter into your holy presence as Moses did on that mountain in the wilderness so many years ago. And God, we pray that our experience in your holy presence will leave us changed and help us to change the world around us with your presence, with your love, with your grace. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
Let me invite you to find your hymnal in the pew rack in front of you and turn with me to number 625. It is a um, cloudy day with thunderstorms possibly on the way, and yet we have much to rejoice in, um, the rain and the sun and the promises of God, especially the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. And so I invite you to stand and sing joyfully number 625, Standing on the Promises. Would you stand together? Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Our scripture reading today comes from the Old Testament, and I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, and chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. In the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on the very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to, the, to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession." 
although the whole earth is mine, you will be far, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I was telling Caleb that our children's or our Bible story this morning was about something that happened on a mountain. And so he drew a picture of a mountain. Did you hear what happened on the mountain? God came to the people and the people had just gotten free from being slaves. Now, have you ever gone? We'll do that in a minute. Okay. Have you ever gone maybe on the first day of school? Hi, Clarissa. On the first day of school or the first day of camp or the first day of a new class, do the teachers ever spend some time talking about the rules? Yeah, at the beginning of something new, sometimes we have to talk about the rules. Well, that's what happened when the people were free from being slaves. They were free now. And God said, now that you're free, there are some rules for you. So I want to give you this. This is a bookmark that has the Ten Commandments. And this is what we're going to be talking about the next few weeks. These were the rules for the people. Number one is put God first. Number two is worship only God. Use God's name with respect. Remember God's Sabbath. Respect your parents. <laughs> Don't hurt others. Be faithful in marriage. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't be envious of others. So those are the 10 rules. And so kids that aren't here today, I have some extra bookmarks for you too so that you can put this in your Bible or in a book somewhere to remember these 10 rules that God gave the people and gave us. This is what it means to live as God's people. They're all the same. That's fine. All right, let's say a prayer together and ask God to help us follow God's rules, okay? Dear God, thank you for teaching us how to be your people and help us to do what you ask us to do. Amen. Grace Alone, number 43 in your hymnal. Let me invite you to stand together in body or in spirit as we sing.
offertory prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the many blessings you have given us. Thank you for this church. We especially today want to thank you for the gift of much needed rain and the good, good gift of cooler temperatures. Now that we ask, we ask that you accept our gifts of gratitude and we pray that our offerings will be used to help others in the world to know and experience the love of Christ. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, choir. What a beautiful anthem on eagle's wings. God will bear us up on eagle's wings, just as we read in Exodus that God did for the people of Israel. What a beautiful promise, and thank you for that beautiful anthem. Well, you may have heard or seen about eagles this past week as we celebrated the 4th of July, as we saw some of the symbols of this nation, the stars and stripes of the flag and the bald eagle from the official seal. I learned that this seal, the official seal of the United States, was the result of quite a few committees. Perhaps you can imagine how that might have gone. Six years after the United States had declared independence, three different committees had tried to design a seal, but none were approved by Congress. And so finally, the project was turned over to the Secretary of Congress, Charles Thompson, who used elements of the work of the previous committees to design a seal that was finally adopted on June 20th, 1782. And this seal included the bald eagle, which has since become a national symbol. We often think of the eagle as a symbol of strength, and it has been used to portray strength and power since prehistoric times. Many, many cultures have used the eagle as a symbol of power and victory. It's been associated with light, with inspiration, and with the gods. And we heard imagery about an eagle today in our Old Testament reading from Exodus 19 as God is compared to an eagle. God says, I bore you on eagle's wings. This passage that we read from Exodus, parts of uh, chapter 19 and a couple of verses from chapter 20, takes place three months after the people of Israel have escaped their lives of slavery in Egypt. During these three months, they've been traveling through the desert where God has provided for them bread from heaven and water from a rock. God has protected them. God has nurtured them. God has led them. And then here at a mountain in the wilderness, God speaks to the people through Moses, reminding them, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. On eagle's wings, the powerful, strong eagle's wings. On these wings, God rescued God's people and brought them to safety. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 10 through 12, we find a more detailed description of an eagle-like God caring for Israel, the descendants of Jacob. The Lord sustained Jacob in a desert land, in a howling wilderness waste. He shielded him, cared for him, guarded him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, as it spreads its wings, takes them up, and bears them aloft on its pinions, the Lord alone guided him. No foreign god was with him. Just as the eagle is king of the creatures of the sky, God is Lord of all the earth. No other God protected the Israelites. No other power rescued them from the Egyptians. Only the Lord God, Yahweh, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of Moses. This is the God who bore the people of Israel on eagle's wings, away from harm, away from slavery, providing for their needs and leading them to safety. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, God says, and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now notice where it is that God says God has brought the people, not I brought you to a new land or to this mountain or even out of Egypt, but I brought you to myself. What is important about the freedom God has granted them and this new life they are to lead is that it is for God. They have been brought to God. God is the center of who they are as free people. Remember what God had told Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go so that they may worship me. The people have been brought to freedom for the purpose of belonging to God. They have been brought to God, for God, by God, not just brought out of Egypt, 
not just to a new destination, but this destination is, one, is not one that can be identified with coordinates on a map. This new destination to which God has brought them is God. It is in God that they will find freedom. Not in a new land, not on a holy mountain, but in their identity as God's people. I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself, God says. And then God proceeds to describe what it looks like to live in God, to live with God, to live for God, to live according to God. But before we can get to the laws of Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments, the do's and the don'ts, the thou shalt's and thou shalt not's, we first have to establish what this is all about. The, The who central to this story is God. God's people are called into relationship with God. And if they do not first commit themselves to that relationship, then the rules God is going to give them will never accomplish their intended purpose. You may have attended a wedding ceremony in which before the vows and the rings and the kiss, you sometimes hear a declaration of intent where each party is asked to declare their intent to accept the other as their spouse, to live together in the covenant of marriage, to love, comfort, honor, and keep one another in sickness and in health and forsaking all others to be faithful to one another as long as both shall live. And marriage requires both partners to answer affirmatively to this declaration of intent. That is what a covenant is, something in which both parties commit themselves. This covenant between God and the people entered into on the mountain in the book of Exodus also requires both parties to answer affirmatively, to declare their intention to enter into this covenantal relationship. The relationship comes before the law. Or as I heard one pastor say, 19 comes before 20. Exodus chapter 19, the relationship, the covenant, comes before Exodus chapter 20, the law, the instructions. To get to the Ten Commandments of Exodus 20, first we have to remember that covenantal relationship of Exodus chapter 19. How God bore the people on eagle's wings to bring them to God. It is in this covenantal relationship that the law is based Another Old Testament professor writes, God first establishes the relationship with us, and only then does God make a claim on our behavior. The relationship comes first. Some of you know that my husband, Travis, worked for a short time as an assistant band director a number of years ago, and one of the aspects of that work which he found especially challenging was that he was appointed the disciplinarian for the whole band, but he was only an instructor for the percussion section. And so with the percussion students, he developed a relationship, a relationship of trust and respect. And so when discipline was needed as a teaching tool, it was received the way it was intended. It was instructive. It was helpful. But when students from other sections were sent to him for discipline, he didn't have that relationship to build on. And he couldn't cultivate it because he had other responsibilities. And so the discipline was received in a very different way, in a negative way. It was received as as punishment and, and harshly, and it was often rejected and resisted. Before rules can be imposed, before expectations of behavior can be made, There must be a relationship, an agreement, a covenant. And that's what God shows us in Exodus 19 and 20. Before the Ten Commandments are given as law, as instructions, as rules, God's people are reminded who God is. These laws are based on God's identity as rescuer, protector, provider, like the mighty eagle and on the identity of the people belonging to God, having entered into a covenant with God. Without this relationship, the commandments cannot function as God intended. The Ten Commandments are not just a checklist of rules to follow. They are a description of who God is, of what it looks like to live as God's people. 
God is known through the teachings of Scripture, through the books of the law and the prophets. And we draw near to God by living according to this description of who God is. This morning we begin a three-week study of these Ten Commandments. But before we can examine the commandments themselves, we have to start with the relationship upon which the commandments are built, our relationship with God. And so as we are preparing to study these commandments, I wanted to focus today on what it means to belong to God, on what it means to enter that covenantal relationship with God, because it is the relationship with God that is central. The relationship comes before the behavioral expectations. 19 comes before 20. So let me invite you to consider for a moment your relationship with God. How has God borne you on eagle's wings? How has God protected you, rescued you, provided for you? How have you experienced God's care and love? As part of our Wednesday night vacation Bible school this summer, I've been asking both our children and our adults to share what we call God sightings. Every Wednesday night at supper after we celebrate that week's birthdays, I ask, how have you seen God this week? How have you experienced God's power? And you all have been writing your God sightings on stickers that look like train tracks, and then we put them on a mural in the fellowship hall. So if you go down to the fellowship hall, you'll see a big mural that shows kind of a mountain lake scene with train tracks going all over the place. Those are our God sightings, the ways in which we have experienced God bearing us on eagle's wings. And if you look at that scene in the fellowship hall, you see a glimpse of our congregation's relationship with God. These God sightings are ways we have experienced God, ways in which God has borne us on eagle's wings. How have we experienced God this summer? Some people have said, have mentioned for their God sightings, they've experienced God through God's presence with them at camp through strength to pass a swimming test, through the presence of grandchildren, and in the successful sale of a family home. These, among others, are our God sightings, ways that we have experienced God's presence. These are some of the ways we have experienced God bearing us on eagles' wings. Just as God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, God rescues us from that which holds us captive, from fear, from worry, from uncertainty about the future. Just as God provided manna and water in the desert, God provides for our needs. Just as God led the people to a mountain, to a place where they would encounter the holy presence of God, God leads us to spaces and places where we too can encounter and worship God. One commentator described the mountain in Exodus 19 as the place where earth touches heaven, where the human realm makes contact with the abode of God. You may have heard the term thin places used to describe such places. A thin place is the space between where the space between earth and heaven seems to diminish and God feels closer somehow. Some experience this in nature, especially on a mountaintop where we somehow feel closer to God's presence. Or sometimes in a sacred building, perhaps an ancient church or historical site. That term, thin places, is often attributed to Celtic spirituality, but God's people experienced this concept of thin places long before Celtic traditions developed. Way back in Exodus 19, the people were on a mountain, a place where God reached down close to them. The place where they encounter God on this mountain could be called a thin place. The boundary between heaven and earth becomes less pronounced and God comes near. The people encounter God's holy presence on a mountain in the wilderness. And God reminds them, I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. 
God brings God's people near, that we might live as God created us to live. The Ten Commandments goes on to describe the nuts and bolts of what that kind of life looks like. But first, before we have any chance of living up to God's standards, we have to remember the God to whom we belong. God says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. One of the things I have discovered as a parent is that sometimes when a child is struggling to listen or to obey, what is most helpful can be to remind the child of your relationship to spend meaningful time together, to draw near to them, to listen to them. There's certainly a time for reminding them of rules and expectations. There's a time for consequences. But without the relationship, none of that can accomplish what we hope. The relationship must come first. For God created us for relationship, and God comes near to us. That is how God interacts with us. Before the rules are given, the relationship is made center. Relationship with God comes before the commandments of the law. 19 comes before 20. And so let me invite you today to reflect on your relationship with God. How have you entered into God's covenant? Before we can be reminded of these laws, what we're supposed to do and not do, may we first remember what it is all about, that God has borne us on eagles' wings to bring us to God, to draw us near to God, for that is what God wants, for us to be near to God. Let us draw near to God and let us go to God in prayer. Powerful God, creator God, savior God, we give you thanks for the ways in which you have shown your power to us. You have rescued us. You have borne us on eagle's wings and you have brought us near to you. And so we pray God this day that we might rest in the shelter of your protection. May we draw near to you. May we rest from our worries, from our strivings, from all the things we feel we must do. May we rest for this day in your presence, being reminded that we belong to you and that you are the great God who goes to great lengths to rescue us, to protect us, because you love us. And God, we know that you do this so that we might enter into relationship with you. And so we pray, God, that we might renew our covenant with you. Remind us who we are called and created to be. God, grant us strength and faith and courage to live into that relationship, to live as your free people. And we pray, God, that in this freedom, in this life of relationship with you, we might draw more and more near to your heart, to your desire, to your love. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. We sing our hymn of response this morning, hymn 404, I Need Thee Every Hour, as we are reminded of the the need and the desire for that relationship with God. As we sing our hymn of response, I'll be at the altar table. If you feel led to make a public response this day or perhaps to just come and pray with me, I would welcome the opportunity to hear from you. Let us respond as God leads, I Need Thee Every Hour, hymn 404. Would you stand together?
the announcements and upcoming opportunities. Our teenagers are meeting tomorrow morning in the fellowship hall for their meeting and lunch. Uh, Pam Willoughby will be sharing pictures and stories of their recent travels out west. And Warren, too. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Just want, didn't want to commit him. <laughs> But that will be a great opportunity to hear about some of their uh, recent adventures in their camper out west. Uh, if you do plan to be here, please let Evelyn know this morning uh, as they are finalizing the lunch count uh, so that we can make sure we have enough lunch for everyone. We are resuming our Wednesday night activities this week with supper. Be sure to update your reservations if needed. Also, our children will be back to Vacation Bible School and our adults continuing with the power of Jesus theme for our Bible study this summer. The youth are going to have a special activity this week, and Chris can provide details to youth about that. Uh, but it is going to last a little longer than their normal Bible study time, and so we will not have choir practice this week because Chris will be on a special activity with the youth on Wednesday night. Um, I also wanted to mention some of you may have heard that Ann Rawton uh, broke her hip a few days ago. She had surgery yesterday yesterday at Oconee um, and Charlie was telling me he talked to her last night she was out of surgery and was doing better so please do remember Ann Rotten in your prayers are there any other announcements we need to mention all right what a joy to be together to worship God uh, you may have noticed my parents are with us today we spent the week with them at the lake and they're on their way back today but graced us with their presence and I uh, brought Caleb since he spent the night with them last night uh, my dad is pastor of Haddock Baptist Church and celebrates his 30th year as pastor next month uh, and is starting to talk about retirement maybe <laughs> so I have invited him to offer our word of benediction Diction today. It's good to be here with you today. Would you bow together for our benediction? Holy God, we have been reminded today of your presence and your desire to be in relationship with us, Lord. Help us, Lord, every day look for those thin places in our life where you reveal yourself in a mighty way to remind us of your love and your grace and help us to walk with you faithfully in Christ's name. Amen.